Well, welcome to our very first Trial Talk Live. It's 1230 and Master Gardeners, if anything, we are prompt. So we're ready to start. I'm very pleased to introduce our first uh, speaker uh, on Trial Talk Live, Judith Cox. Um, and I describe Judith as a happy gardener who enjoys being in her garden, growing vegetables and ornamentals. She also enjoys sharing her knowledge and experience with other gardeners. And that's what she's going to do today, getting you off to a good start with tips to ensure tomato success. Over to you, Judith. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. We want to know uh, if for tomatoes, we, we can grow our tomatoes from seed. We can start now if you want to, from your saved seeds, from seeds that you get in seed catalogs, nurseries, or stores. If you're going to grow from saved seeds, you want to be sure you're collecting from an open pollinated tomato. Usually uh, heritage tomatoes are these kind of tomatoes. That means you will get the same tomato the following year. If you decide to save your seeds from a hybrid, hybrid tomato, you cannot be guaranteed what kind of tomato you're going to get the following year. So you're safer to save seeds from your, um, from, from your heritage plants or open pollinated plants and use up the seeds from your hybrids and buy more seeds as you need them. The seeds you get from the seed catalogs are usually exactly what you need for our area. Uh, you can get seed catalogs um, delivered to you usually for free or order from them online. In the nurseries, you will see banks and banks of uh, seeds all set for you, but I recommend that you try seeds that are from Canada or from um, hopefully somewhere around Ontario. That way we know we've got hardy little tomatoes. You can see that these seeds are already planted up and uh, I covered them with some plastic to keep in some of the humidity and some of the heat. I also put them on a bit of a heat map to give them a little bit of a start. Uh, if you're wondering why my plant stand is covered in bird netting, it is to keep the too many cats that I have from going through and exploring the plants. Also, you can grow your seeds on a sunny window or even on a table with a bright light over them. As they start to grow, you will see something called seed leaves, or ca catalidin, pardon me. The seed leaves are just two little leaves, two little leaves, and they all kind of look the same. Then you'll see the new leaves sprouting up from these plants look like tomato leaves. And those are the true leaves. You can see here that I've uh, planted up several of the tomatoes because they were getting too big for their containers. Tomatoes grow at different rates. They are different sizes. So you can see the one at the back, that's not large because it's reaching for light. It's large because that's the kind of tomato that it is. Now, when you're ready to plant out, you want to make sure that there's no more frost. If there's going to be a hard frost, your tomatoes are not going to be happy. If you do plant them out and there's a wee nip of frost, be sure to cover them up overnight so that they'll stay safe. You want to harden off your tomatoes before you plant them either in the ground or in a pot. Hardening off means that you're going to give them some time to adjust to the outdoors. They will go into shock if you put them in a cold soil or they're in the bright, bright sun after being pampered in your house. This also applies to seed seedlings that you pick up at the nursery. Remember, they've been growing in special conditions and they can't automatically go immediately into the ground. Up to a week is usually enough time for hardening off. Then when you're all set to plant, you want to be digging a hole in nice, good soil and adding compost. If like me, you grow the majority of your tomatoes in a pot, it's the same thing. Good garden soil with lots of compost. Try not to add too much food at this time as they're already a bit stressed going in. You can start feeding them later as they grow. 
if you put your tomatoes outside too early, you may find that the first block fruit develop a deformity in the blossom end. That just means that it was too cold when you planted it and they got a frost nip and they get something that is called cat face. Now, it just looks awful. You cut it off and you can still eat the fruit. And as your fruits develop over time, they will be fine. Now that you have your, your tomato, you need to decide, is this a determinate or an indeterminate tomato? If you have a determinate tomato, it's usually a bushy type tomato. And while it is recommended you don't need to stake it, I found that the fruits often are heavy on these kind of tomatoes and I like to prop them up. Sometimes just using a sock or something soft to tie them onto a stake. Determinant tomatoes give you all your bang for a buck all at once. So you're going to get lots of flowers and then lots of fruit and that is that. Indeterminant tomatoes start to grow and then they bloom and then they produce and they keep doing so all the way up until you have a killing frost. These are the tomatoes that are usually the ones you want to prune. You'll find that they grow like crazy, they grow really big and sometimes there's just too much of a plant there. So you prick out little bits and pieces that are overlapping. You wanna be sure that your tomatoes have enough airflow going through. That's when you want to prune. As I said, tomatoes are hanging baskets or directly in the ground. Now here's a great number in pots, which are going to be moved because as you can see, they're too close together. They're not going to like to be that squished. You wanna get some airflow in there. You could buy actual tomatoes that are bred for hanging baskets. They're called patio tomatoes. They are absolutely delightful hanging around in a little basket. Now, one of the first things you want to do once you have your tomato planted and by the way, plant your tomato at least three inches or so up the stem so more roots can form along the stem to give your tomato plant more stability. Then what you want to do is make a cutworm collar because cutworms are the bane of a gardener's existence. You will find those are the ones when you come out in the morning and your tomatoes toppled over, their fault. So a cutworm collar can be made out of a toilet tissue roll. It is wrapped around the base of the tomato plant because the cutworm wraps himself around the base of your tomato plant. He cannot wrap himself around the collar. Therefore, you have saved your tomatoes from the cutworms. The next thing you want to do is be sure you are prepared for watering your tomatoes. Tomatoes don't like a lot of splash and they don't like a lot of water on them. I like to take a two liter pop bottle and cut the end off it and place that directly beside the root. That way when I'm watering the pot, I can know that I'm getting a lot of water directly where it wants to be. If you end up getting lots of splashes on the soil, you'll find that you get blight or early blight developing on your lower leaves and you don't want that. I water my pots daily and I monitor the in-ground plant because they don't dry out quite as quickly, but they still really need to be, uh, you really need to be aware of how much water is added. This also is a good opportunity to remember that you need mulch so that the water doesn't bounce off the soil. Blossom end rot is something that often results from irregular watering. Now, I have had many, many tomatoes, and the only time I got blossom end rot was when I had a tomato that I neglected to water regularly or to feed regularly. As I am only using organics, I use a fish emulsion fertilizer to water once a week, very weak solution, so that I know that my plant is getting all the nutrients that it needs, and I water them regularly almost sort of religiously at the same time of day. So I know that they're getting regular watering, regular feeding. You can also use tomato food 
which you will find in a nursery. It's usually 10, 10, 10 or 10, 20, 10, and is made specifically for tomatoes. Remember to read the package carefully because less is more. Over fertilizing will not bring better tomatoes. You don't want to make them all stressed out. First thing I do is plant a calendula in there with my tomatoes. See that lovely open flower? Pollinators love that. It brings in lots of pollinators and I use the calendula flowers to make a very nice medicinal oil. Marigolds are a favorite in with tomatoes. I use French marigolds because they seem to be the ones that attract the most beneficial insects as well as they die, they are very neat and clean about it. So you don't have a lot of messiness. They attract so many beneficial insects. That's the sort of thing that you get with a uh, companion planting. There's nothing that's going to uh, protect everything, keep stuff away, but there are lots of plants that'll bring stuff in that's going to fight for your plant. Also the scent of the marigold tends to disguise the scent of the tomato. It also is a scent that squirrels and rabbits don't particularly enjoy. I plant nasturtiums as a capture crop for aphids. Aphids are very attracted to nasturtiums and then I can blast them off with a great big thing of water from the hose. They also attract hummingbirds, which who doesn't want that in and around your tomatoes? A lot of people grow basil with their tomatoes, saying that it, in, it makes the taste and the yield better. Now, I'm not overly the scientific uh, uh, evidence of this, but I say eating basil with tomatoes is one of my favorite things to do. There is also a, a speculation that it prevents tomato hornworms. Again, you're looking at scent. If you disguise the food of the tomato hornworm, there's a possibility that it won't eat your tomato. Now, personally, I like tomato hornworms because I love the moth, but and I will sacrifice one or two branches of my tomato for that. I put them on the branch where I think, okay, you can have that one. A listen is something I like to use as a living mulch under my tomatoes. It's beautiful, smells like honey, and uh, it, tr it provides shelter for spiders. Also, uh, if I don't have any alyssum, I use a straw. You can also use hay, but you'll get a lot of uh, weeds out of that. Tomatoes are not always red. You get them in yellow and sometimes even blue. These tiny, tiny blue tomatoes are called blueberry tomatoes, believe it or not. They were a treat to grow. They look beautiful, although they're very acidic. So they're sort of a, a fire. So many different types of tomatoes out there. It's, it's unbelievable. One main thing I must uh, emphasize is once your tomatoes have grown, See over here on the left, you see an example of an indeterminate tomato that has never seen pruners in its whole life. You want to clean up thoroughly all the plants, all the tomatoes. Do not leave anything like that to overwinter. You don't want to put that tomato material directly into your composter. Your composter is not hot enough to kill all the spores of blight and other fungal diseases that can be on your tomato and they will overwinter. So either you put them into the green bin so they go to a compost where it is hot, or you put them in a black garbage bag and let them sit in the sun for a very long time. Now you need to decide, are you going to try a heritage or are you going to try a hybrid? I think you, I have five tomatoes on the grow, go and I'd like to grow several more. So if you have any questions about tomatoes, I suggest you contact the Master Gardeners of Otto Carlton at mgottawa.ca. And thank you so very much for your time. So thank now, you, Judith. Yeah, oh, thank sorry. you, Judith. 
Thank you, Judith, so much. And um, we'll let you unshare your screen now. And then um, we'll see if there's any questions. Uh, Marion's been monitoring. Or if you have any questions for Judith, uh, you can put them in the chat line and she'll be happy to uh, respond to them. We have uh, one question. Um, Judith, would you recommend a soilless mixture to start your tomatoes? Um, I've done it both ways. Uh, right now I'm using a soilless mixture. I just, I'm, it's because I kind of know what's happening that way. <laughs> uh, if I, I have also done it with the soilless mixture and then added worm compost, and that is wonderful. That gives them a nice little boost. Uh, there's another question here. Uh, can you say more please about hardening, hardening off? How many I've hours done. each day? Okay, well, what I do is, okay, if I have several little seedlings, I put them on that shelf that I showed you. It is off the ground. That's very important. You want to have them off the ground because it's cold down there. Then I put them in an area with partial sun. I uncover them in the morning when I'm doing my chores, and I cover them up again when I'm putting the chickens to bed. That's what I do. And then I leave them out there for a good a good week, just to be sure. If I find that they're getting a little limp, then I know they're in too much sun and I'll move them to a shadier area for a little while. But that usually doesn't happen because I found that sweet spot with the special, with, it just has sun for about um, two o'clock on. Perfect. Uh, there's another question here from Kathy Potts. Uh, how do you plant the seeds? How deep, etc.? Oh, well, you want to put your soilless mix or whatever you're using for soil into, uh, I start with a cell pack. Now you can actually get those little, little things that uh, um, they're like little peat pots that are dehydrated and you rehydrate them. But I haven't had a lot of luck with them. I find they dry out very, very quickly. That's just my experience. Then what I do is I would take the seed and lightly press it on the soil, not burying it, just lightly pressing. Then I take about a little bit of soil in my fingers and I sprinkle it over the top so that it's covered. And I push that down a bit gently too. And also when you are planting in soilless mix particularly, make sure that you water it first so you're not putting it into all that dry soil. Um, because when you water it, it all goes poof like that. And you want to be sure that it's wet enough that uh, it's going to be more soil-like. Great tips. Thank you, Judith. Uh, another question from Karen McDonald. How best to protect against squirrels? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Short of, I, I was almost an Elmer Fudd last summer. I just had it with the damn thing. Uh, so I plant a lot of marigolds around because of the scent. They don't like that. I have used barbecue skewers with the pointy ends out. And I have like a little fortress going all the way around my pot. I've used bird netting around because they can't get at it then. But you must be careful because toads can get caught in that. So I'm very careful when I'm using the netting. Uh, usually, if it's up high enough as a pot, it doesn't affect anything. Um, it is just, they are just unreal. I find the chipmunks are even worse. I'm yeah, sorry. they get into <laughs> below and above. <laughs> yeah, they get thank, into everywhere. <laughs> thank you, Judith. Uh, another question from Joya Hel Helpany. I'm sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. How do you prune the indeterminates? Well, if you notice with your indeterminates, you'll have a main stem and off of the stem you'll find branches and then the branches will split and a little bit of a, a thing will come in between the branches and as they start to split you want to get in like in the crotch right there where between the branches and just pick that out the main thing to look for is if you find it's getting way too dense and you're not getting your airflow going through that's the one that you want to be sure that you plant, that you prune out. If it gets to the point where, oh my gosh, I just want to take out this whole branch, go for it. It's okay. 
but I try to just take little bits and pieces. I let mine go nuts, but uh, also I have a big, big um, uh, uh, cage for them so they can spread out and do their thing. Perfect. Um, that's it for questions. It was, did anybody else have questions uh, they wanted to ask Judith? Can unmute yourself or write it in the text, uh, the chat there's room just, here. I see yeah, one here about one pruning one. off the top. I don't do that. Um, I don't, I find, I, I find that it, if you do regular feedings and regular waterings, you are going to have more than enough tomatoes at your disposal. And if you end up pruning off determinate ones, you will have fewer fruit. The only time that I prune is if I'm finding it's top heavy or it's blocking airflow. Uh, late blight are things uh, that you're going to get into without regular maintenance. I have no blight in my garden because I clean everything up I water once a week, uh, pardon me, feed once a week, and I water every single day or when it's needed. No blight. I have a question about um, determinant in pots. Indeterminate is, is there, can you plant indeterminate tomatoes in pots or do they just get too big? The, I have indeterminate uh, tomatoes in pots. I have great big pots. I put my one tomato in there with my little flowers and extras, of course, only one. Uh, I would not plant more than that in a pot. I have a cage in there. The one thing though, I plant the tomato deep enough so that it has enough stability as it's growing. You don't want to plant it right on the surface. You want to give a good three or four inches of the tomato plant in the soil so the roots form along that stem. And ideally, what size is the pot? Well, mine are like a big, you know, those big speed buckets or a whiskey barrel size. Okay. Yeah. That, that I guarantee you'll have lots of tomatoes if you use one of those. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. If there's no more questions, I just wanted to say uh, to Judith, um, Judith is coming you know, Ottawa is a big city, right? And Judith's coming yeah. to us from Stittsville. And so just amazingly, the internet connection worked well for us today, uh, Judith. And, and we're so happy <laughs> that uh, we had all your wonderful experience. Thank you. So thank you thank so you. much. If there's um, any other questions. Uh, is that a question from you, Karen? Oh no, you're clapping. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs>